All right, let's take a look at gel electrophoresis. And gel electrophoresis is a technique for separating and purifying macromolecules, whether this is proteins or DNA. More often than not, you know, it's one of those two that we're looking at. So this uses a, a type of gelatin called agarose gel. Uh, you can think of it as like jello, but it lacks uh, food coloring and sugar in there, all right, and artificial flavorings. Uh, and so what we do is we uh, use that gel we uh, put it into a fluid that can conduct an electric current, and then we put the molecules in that we want to look at. Uh, and then we turn the current on, and then molecules will move uh, you know, uh, by that energy that's put in there. Uh, it'll cause those molecules to move. All right? Now, if it is a negative molecule, it moves to the positive end. If it is a positive molecule, it moves to the negative end. Now, DNA is a negative molecule, so it moves to the positive end. All right, and also what we see in here is that uh, the smaller the molecule is, the more it moves. Uh, it takes less energy to move a smaller object than it does a larger one. So uh, if all these things are given the same amount of energy, uh, you know, they, um, uh, so if they're all given the same amount of energy, smaller molecules are gonna move farther. And what you will see is these little lines show up uh, in the agarose gel. So this is trying to show these little lines that we actually see and this is showing it through a light so we can see this pretty easily. Now, we don't just take DNA and just put it in here. Uh, what we uh, do to that DNA uh, is that we uh, expose it to what is known as a restriction enzyme. And a restriction enzyme is a bacterial enzyme that cuts up foreign DNA. And this is uh, beneficial to bacteria in that uh, it protects against viral DNA. So if a virus injects its genetic material into the, the bacterium, its restriction enzyme will just chop up that viral bacteria and then it doesn't have to deal with it anymore. So in biology though, we use restriction enzymes to cut DNA in reproducible ways. So in this case, what we see here is that wherever we have the sequence of G uh, or CCGG, uh, we're going to make a cut there. So that's what the restriction enzyme does. It makes a cut there. We see the same sequence here. It makes a, uh, it makes a cut there. All right. Now, over here, you see that we don't have that same sequence, so we don't see the same cut being made. All right. So, uh, so what we see is restriction enzymes cut in what are known as DNA palindrome areas. Now, palindrome in the English language is a word that is spelled the same front to back like uh, Bob, or race car, or poop, or taco cat. Uh, but, with, uh, uh, but with DNA, uh, a restriction enzyme, or a, a DNA palindrome is the same in this direction as it is in that direction. So we see CCGG, CCGG. All right, so that's what we're looking for there. All right, so what this creates when we expose DNA to this restriction enzyme is it's going to, in this case, it cuts the DNA three times, or I'm sorry, two times, which creates three uh, molecules, all right? Over here, it just cut it once, so we have two molecules. So over here, two times, one, two, three molecules. So each of those molecules is known as a restriction fragment. So these are molecules of DNA produced from a longer DNA molecule cut up by a restriction enzyme, all right? So what we do is now we take that and we put it into that agarose gel, run it through gel electrophoresis, and what happens here is we get what is known as the DNA fingerprint. So this is an individual's unique collection of DNA restriction fragments, all right? So the Y fragment being the smallest moved the farthest. You can see it's the same size molecule there, moves to that line. The X molecule, because it's the longest of these three, only moves that far. The W molecule moves farther than the X, but on this person, you know, that there's no cut there, so this is one long molecule, doesn't move a whole lot, all right? So, the number of cuts can be unique because what we do, instead of looking at uh, the majority of the DNA, there's no sense to look at the majority of the DNA. A lot of our DNA is what we call fixed. It's the same for all of us. I mean, think about it. Like when you look at another person, you're gonna see a lot more similarities in that person than you see differences. And here's the things I'm talking about. You know, you see that they produce hair. You see that they have skin. You see that they have two eyes, a nose, a mouth, 
uh, arms and hands and fingers and toes and stuff like that. So a lot of our DNA is going to be very, very similar. All right. Where our DNA is going to be very different from each other is when we look at our immune genes. So our immune genes are unique to each individual. And so when we cut this on the uh, immune genes, hopefully we get different strands there. All right. So what we do is we would look at, you know, take some blood from a crime scene and then compare this to different suspects. So this is shown, you know, the banding pattern from the blood from this crime scene. Oh, and this person over here has the same banding pattern. And then we'd say, oh, this is more than likely the person who committed the crime. We know for sure that person didn't commit it. 